Okay, somebody under one of my videos left a comment requesting a video on a substance called Lion's Mane. Lion's Mane is a mushroom. It has uh, the, the uh, botanical name is Heracium arenaceus. It's also known as Yamabushitake. Yama but uh, I'm not going to keep using those names that just too hard to pronounce. So I'm going to keep just keep calling it Lion's Mane. It's called Lion's Mane because of its, its resemblance. It's kind of like long white strands uh, of this particular mushroom. And it looks kind of like a, I guess in some people's mind, it looks like a lion's mane. Personally, I don't really think see any much of a resemblance, but, you know, that's the way it is. Lion's mane contains over 70 bioactive compounds, and it also contains 68% glucose. 100 grams are about 3.5 ounces if you were to eat this, and it is used in cooking sometimes. It contains 167 calories and 33 grams of carbohydrates. The main attraction of lion's mane is as a brain stimulant or neurotropic substance. Now, I've, I've discussed in past videos, I've discussed both smart drugs and neurotropic nutrients. Lion's mane falls in the category of a new, of a uh, of a nootrophic nutrient or a brain possibly brain stimulating nutrient. At least two of the natural compounds in lion's mane can, can promote the synthesis of a compound made in the brain called nerve growth factor. Nerve growth factor, as the name implies, stimulates the growth of neurons. In fact, a study just came out the other day, which really should be very exciting for anyone over 40. Because they used to think that, you know, you were born with a set number of neurons in your brain. And as you age, you lost neurons, thousands of them every year. Some people say about as much, as many as 100,000 neurons a year. Now, that might still occur. But in recent years, new studies in, in, uh, in uh, neurobiology have found that there are certain changes in the brain that occur with age. For example, your uh, neurons can sprout new dendrites. Or, um, or synapses or connections. So even if you lose a certain number of neurons a day as you age, your brain can kind of make up for it by kind of like bypassing the dead neurons and, and kind of interacting with the ones that are still working to keep your brain going. But more exciting was the report the other day which showed that the, uh, the, the main area of the brain involved in memory and intelligence known as the hippocampus uh, it turns out that adults can keep developing new neurons throughout life. Throughout life. This is big news. I mean, I'm surprised it didn't really make the headlines because what it indicates is that learning really never ends, like the cliche goes. In other words, if you want you to be smarter, and you want your brain to work better, you have to exercise your brain just like you exercise your muscles. You have to stimulate your brain with unusual uh, activities. Uh, that you you know that that cause you to think more. For example, learning computer skills, playing chess, learning a foreign language, uh, playing a, learning how to play a musical instrument, and just plain reading will stimulate the new new neuron development. Now, lion's mane comes into play because it stimulates nerve growth factor. Nerve growth factor will interact with your stimulation uh, the stimulation that you're providing for your brain and it will help you develop new brain cells in this sense you can actually make yourself more intelligent i'm not going to say it's going to make you a genius but it will definitely increase brain efficiency uh lion's mane can promote uh this nerve growth factor but it's questionable whether it offers actual brain protection although some studies show that, uh, it, uh, unfortunately these were all animal studies, it shows it helps to prevent the buildup in the brain of toxic proteins such as beta amyloid, which is associated with the onset of Alzheimer's disease. So in that sense, uh, lion's mane might actually offer some brain protection. Um, it also might slow the, protection, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the progression of another brain degeneration disease called Parkinson's disease which is characterized by a loss of neurons in the nucleus accumbens area or the substantia nigra area of the brain. Um, anyway, it, you know, lion's mane, uh, probably because of its antioxidant action, might help prevent Parkinson's disease. In one double-blind placebo-controlled study, providing 100 milligrams a day of lion's mane for three times a day for 16 weeks in 30 Japanese people ages 50 to 80, all showed 
increases in memory and cognitive ability, in other words, thinking ability. All of these people, I should point out, had prior cognitive impairment. In other words, they were, had memory deficits. You know, they, they weren't thinking clearly. When they gave them the lion's mane, uh, it definitely improved their thinking ability. Uh, however, when they stopped using the lion's mane, this newfound thinking ability kind of disappeared. In other words, they went back to the way they were before, which suggests that if you want to uh, have the uh, benefits of lion's mane continue, you have to take it regularly. If you get off it, for some reason, you tend to recede back to the way you were before. There are 24 studies showing relationship of lion's mane to cancer, but all are, anim all are more animal studies. One study showed that providing mice with uh, lion's mane prevented the spread of cancer from the colon to the lungs. Other studies show that lion's mane sensitizes tumor cells to the effects of chemotherapy. In other words, taking lion's mane makes uh, any type of chemotherapy drug work more efficiently to attack tumor cells. In relation to cardiovascular health, one study of rabbits, again, an animal study. You've, um, unfortunately, I should add, nearly all the studies that have, done on, uh, that have been done on lion's mane have involved animals, which doesn't necessarily translate into human physiology, as I've said in past videos. But in any case, this rabbit study showed that Providing the rabbits with lion's mane prevented a condition called platelet aggregation. Platelets are, are, are uh, little cells that kind of uh, circulate in the blood. Uh, they're, they're needed for blood clotting. However, however, sometimes they aggregate too much and they initiate a blood clot in a blood vessel, which can lead to a heart attack or stroke. So lion's mane will help prevent this excessive platelet aggregation. In that sense, it might uh, it might prevent help prevent cardiovascular problems like heart attacks and strokes. Uh, also providing uh, uh, lion's mane to animals. It also lowered plasma lipid levels such as cholesterol uh, after the animals consumed a high fat diet. Other animal studies show that lion's mane may help prevent ulcers. It also appears to lower elevated blood glucose levels, blood glucose levels in animals by as much as 50 percent. This suggests that lion's mane may be of use to diabetics and pre-diabetics or people who are insulin insensitive. It'll help control blood glucose. Again, an animal study. We don't know if this uh, happens in humans. Still other studies suggest that lion's mane may offer anti-inflammatory activity by lowering the inflammatory effects of nitric oxide. Now, nitric oxide, of course, is a big topic in bodybuilding because it dilates blood vessels. It increases muscle pump. It stimulates the, the uh, release of certain hormones. But uh, unfortunately, excessive amounts of nitric oxide uh, can cause an inflammatory state. And uh, nutrients that help control that particular aspect of nitric oxide, such as lion's mane and a form of vitamin E called gamma tocopherol, will kind of temper the bad effects of, uh, of nitric oxide while retaining all the beneficial effects. Isolated studies suggest that lion's mane may, uh, may offer potent antioxidant effects it also appears to offer immune boosting effects. It'll, uh, it'll simulate immune response. A study of human cell cultures, again, this is isolated cells. Uh, again, not necessarily applicable to human physiology. But the study of human cell culture suggested that lion's mane may offer anti-aging effects by preventing the accumulation of an age-related pigment called lipo lip lip lipofusin. Lipofusin results from the breakdown of cell membranes uh, it's kind of like a, kind of like a rancid fat that builds up in cells and, and, and interferes with the ability of cells to properly work. So anything that helps to remove lipofusin will help your uh, general health because it makes cells more efficient. As for safety, lion's mane is safe unless it has been exposed to pesticides. For this reason, it's probably best to use an organic for if you decide to use lion's mane, and it's available in powder and tablets. Uh, capsules. You want to probably stick to organic forms just in case. Uh, the, in, in the medical literature, there's not many uh, reports of, of problems with lion's mane. One case of allergic dermatitis was linked to lion's mane, and in one case of respiratory failure, which is a serious problem, but it only happened in one person. That's called a case study, and um, it really it's nothing to really worry about because if it happens in 
quite a few people that used it. That would, I would say that would be a contraindication. I'd say forget even thinking about using Lyons name. Uh, and so in other words, I would call these reactions idiosyncratic. In other words, they uh, they occurred uh, probably something to do with the person's genetics or physiology. Uh, as far as the dosage of uh, lion's mane, I would say about you can use up to about a gram, even two grams a day. Uh, I, I actually have been using lion's mane, and I, I take 600 milligrams. I take uh, I take 400 milligrams in the morning, and then I take another uh, 100 milligrams. I'm sorry, yeah, that's right. I take another 400 milligrams in the morning, another 200 milligrams uh, later on in the afternoon. Uh, just in case I don't take it before too, too close to sleep, because uh, it may be a brain stimulant. Uh, now, by the way, I, uh, again, the, the chief, to, just to summarize, the chief advantage of lion's mane mushroom is that it's, it's it really does stimulate this stuff called nerve growth factor, which will kind of, it's almost like uh, fertilizer for the brain, for the neurons. It stimulates neuronal health and growth. So it's very good for your brain. Now, when you exercise, you stimulate another kind of, uh, ne uh, of nerve growth factor called brain-derived neurotrophic factor. So it could be that if you use something like lion's mane, and then you go to the gym and you know you work out, especially you do aerobics, and stimulate brain-derived neurotrophic factor, you're stimulating two types of nerve growth factors in the brain, which will, uh, I believe, will definitely help memory, uh, will help intelligence, and uh, it will help any type of activity that requires focus and concentration. So that's about it for Lion's Mane. Uh, you know, you could try it if you want, if you're interested in possibly uh, increasing memory and increasing focus and concentration, that type of thing. If you want more information about nutrition, supplements, exercise science, hormonal therapy, fat loss techniques that work, Exercise science. Did I say exercise science? I, I, have, I think I need to take a little more Lion's Mane. I forgot. Anyway, uh, anti-aging research. Subscribe today to my Applied Metabolics newsletter. www.appliedmetabolics.com It's 40 to 50 pages every month. No ads. Pure information. It incorporates evidence-based science and my 56 years of constant study and empirical learning such as training in the gym. I've learned what works and what doesn't work and I part this all in my Applied Metabolics newsletter. Uh, no matter what your level of education and intelligence, I, I promise you will learn something new in every issue of Applied Metabolics. Again, subscribe today. It costs less than the price of a daily newspaper www.appliedmetabolics.com. Uh, if you if you subscribe, you will also uh, get access to my private Applied Metabolics Facebook page, where I post regularly new studies re related to nutrition and exercise and general health. And I also answer questions. I also uh, respond to questions submitted to my email portal on my Applied Metabolics site from subscribers only. I don't answer unsolicited questions, and I prefer not to answer unsolicited questions under the uh, YouTube videos uh, also. Uh, I do answer questions, again, to subscribers of my Applied Metabolics newsletter. If you want to have the best friend you ever have, go to your local shelter, adopt the dog. They're the greatest, the best. I love them. Take care.